The offseason is here and the Mariners have some holes to fill on the offensive side of things. So in this video, we're going to be looking at my top targets for the Mariners this winter on the free agent market in terms of bats. And of course, we have to start with Shohei Otani. There's a lot that goes into Shohei Otani and what it would take to bring him to the Mariners, especially with Tommy John. Do I think he's coming here? No, no, I do not. But of course, Shohei, if you sign him as a DH only, would be a great addition to this lineup in the middle of the order. And if you send him to a multi-year deal, him coming back and pitching for you in 2025 could make all the difference in the world. Without going too far into contracts and what it would take to bring Shohei here, first, let's just look at his baseball savant page. Obviously, this is very, very red. Shohei is one of the best hitters in the world. Shohei's in the 99th percentile in average exit velocity, the 100th percentile in barrel percentage. Nobody reaches the barrel more than Shohei Otani. 97th in hard hit percentage. Of course, expected slugging, 99th. Now, we know that Shohei walks a lot because really nobody wants to pitch to him. He is in the 98th percentile in walks. However, he does swing and miss quite a bit with a 12% whiff percentage. In 2023, Shohei Otani struck out 143 times. His most was 189 times in 2021 but you're also getting an elite power hitter with Shohei Otani where he hit 44 home runs in 2023 before going on the injured list he also hit 304 412 654 for an OPS of 1.066 1066 he is above that 1.0 marker one of the best hitters in all of baseball and Shohei will swipe you a bag. He stole 20 in 2023, 26 back in 2021. Shohei is all around one of the best offensive players in baseball. The question is, what kind of contract is Shohei Otani going to need this offseason? Because him getting Tommy John surgery really complicates things. For the Mariners, do they go out and sign him to a three or four year deal that's very incentive laden? Or if he pitches X amount of innings, he makes x amount of dollars more i'm not sure exactly what it's going to look like it's gonna be the most fascinating contract in baseball history we'll just have to wait and see with shohei but if i'm the mariners i'm willing to give him like a three year i don't even know three year like a hundred million dollar contract with possible escalators if he comes back and is a pitcher he was before that would make him paid 50 million a year three year 150 million dollar contract i don't know what it's going to look like for shohei and i'm not going to pretend to know what it's going to look like for shohei let's just move on to some of the lesser known free agents huh we all know that Reese Hoskins is going to be a free agent this offseason. A first baseman who played for the Phillies who hits 30 home runs a year and is always just one of the most fun guys to watch in baseball. He's a free agent. Do the Mariners take the plunge and sign him? I'm not so sure. He's going to want to take a prove it deal. It's just the nature of him coming off of an ACL injury. He'll make more money on the open market next year if, of course, he comes back and plays to his potential. And if he's taking a prove it deal, he's not going to take it in the pitcher friendly Seattle confines at T Mobile Park. It's just not going to happen. But for a moment here, let's just pretend that Reese Hoskins would come to Seattle. Maybe you have to offer him two years at like, I don't know, $40 million. Are you willing to give Reese Hoskins $20 million a year? I'm not sure, especially coming off of that ACL injury. A few years ago, I would have said, yeah, he's going to get at least $20 million a year. But if you're going to give him multiple years, are you going to give him $20 million? I don't know. Let's take a look at Reese Hoskins' numbers. And of course, then let's see if he can replace Ty France. Again, Hoskins missed all of 2023. So we're going to have to look at his 2022 numbers here. In terms of at the plate, Reese Hoskins was pretty good. Obviously, he was in the 70th-ish percentile for all of the expected stats. The average exit velocity, barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, his sweet spot percentage was in the 85th percentile, and he didn't chase much in the 81st percentile. However, Hoskins did strike out quite a bit. He did also walk quite a bit as well. Looking at his numbers, Reese Hoskins struck out 169 nice times in 2022. And he walked 72 times in 2022. That was good for a 246, 332, 462 slash line. Of course, that's much better than what we saw out of Ty France this year. And again, Hoskins did hit 30 home runs, 33 doubles. Hoskins was a great everyday player over there at first base. His splits exist i guess but he was still a good hitter versus right-handed pitching he hit 233 compared to 286 versus lefties but he still hit 22 home runs in those at bats versus righties albeit in like 300 more plate appearances again is hoskins the guy you want to go out and get to replace ty france at first base or maybe just be another guy who can dh maybe give ty france some days off at first base i don't know and again he's going to be on a prove it deal is he going to want to come to seattle 
it just I, I don't think so I really don't think so and that brings us to another possible Ty France replacement at first base in Heimer Condelario he's a guy that we've talked a lot about he could stand over there at third base and give Gino a day off otherwise he's better suited for first base DH time but with that being said at first base he's going to be able to provide a spark to first base that Ty France couldn't in 2023 now I'm not saying that because you get Heimer Condelario you get rid of Ty France I think they can both coexist on the roster and I think that's the best place for it I think that if you were to platoon some sort of Ty France Heimer Condelario option that's going to be your best bet now let's look at Condelario's numbers in 2023 yeah that's nothing special he had a good sweet spot percentage right around 76 percentile he did not strike out all that much in the 51st percentile and walked a decent amount in the 59th percentile but these numbers are less than inspiring for heimer condelario with that being said he hit 251 336 471 he hit 22 home runs he had 39 doubles he struck out 127 times in 576 plate appearances he also had 53 walks those 22 home runs of course are more than ty france but overall is heimer condelario really that much better than ty france i don't know he had most of his plate appearances last year with the nationals so i guess we'll look at those versus right-handed pitching condelario hit 13 of his 22 home runs he hit 271 352 523 with the nats if and against left-handed pitching condelario in 110 at bats hit three of his 22 home runs he had a 227 average with a 320 obp and a 382 slug there's a big difference with heimer condelario versus lefties and righties and that's why i think your best bet would be to have him as more of a platoon guy a bench guy where you can switch him out with ty france versus righties and Ty France, who hit really well versus lefties, would probably be in there every day. With that being said, is Heimer Condelario going to want to come here and be part of a platoon? I'm not sure. He could probably get a starting job somewhere, maybe not on a super contending team, but I think a team that is on the cusp, right? Which, again, the Mariners. But I think he could go somewhere and get a starting job and be an everyday guy if he wanted to be. I'm not sure if the Mariners would want to do that. I would, I could see the Mariners signing him to like a one year with a club option sort of contract worth, I don't know, 10 to 12 million a year. I, his contract's gonna be very interesting because I think that he is highly overrated, but on this market, it's gonna be so hard to predict the guys that you could go out and sign because there's really no offensive talent this year. Now we have to talk about the elephant in the room and that is Teoscar Hernandez. Do the Mariners bring him back? It's the biggest question in my opinion. There's no chance in hell that Teo's back. We're not really gonna go over his numbers because well, we already know what they looked like, but Teo, I loved the guy. I think that he'd be a good addition to bring back, but I think that he's gonna command a much bigger contract than what the Mariners are gonna be willing to pay him. And if he goes out there on the free agent market this year and finds out that there's really no offers out there, maybe he comes back to the Mariners. I'm not so sure. Teo, he just didn't perform here. In T-Mobile Park, he was really, really bad. Again, Teo in right field, fine. Teo DH, fine, but I don't, you would wanna upgrade. I just don't know if there's guys out there that would upgrade that position. So we'll just move on here from Teo. He's a possibility, a target for me that I wrote down, but I don't know if I really like that idea. So Teo, thanks for playing. We'll see you somewhere else. Next on my list is Lourdes Gurriel Jr. I think this is a very interesting one. Obviously, the human pineapple with the purple hair. I love Lourdes Gurriel. I think he's probably a great clubhouse guy. Of course, I have no insight into that. But he played pretty well for the Diamondbacks, especially in the playoffs. And I think Gurriel is a very interesting player for the Mariners. In 2023, we can see his numbers here. Lourdes Gurriel hit the ball pretty hard at a 77% hard hit percentage. He also didn't swing and miss much and didn't strike out much, but he also didn't walk much. He's a guy who makes a lot of contact, which is something the Mariners could really, really use. Looking at his numbers, in 2023, he hit 261, 309, 463. Good for a 772 OPS in 145 games. He hit 35 doubles. He hit 24 home runs. He struck out 103 times, but also only walked 33 times. Now, those 103 strikeouts were the highest of Gurriel's career, but still, that is nothing compared to what we saw to Teoscar Hernandez or Gino, for example. And I think putting Gurriel in a corner outfield spot with Jared Kelnick and Julio Rodriguez out there would be a really good start. His splits, yeah, Gurriel is way better versus left-handed pitching. He had 301, 363, 452 versus lefties, and 247, 289, 467 versus righties. Again, he's not going to kill you when he's out there versus right-handed pitching. He hit 20 of his 24 home runs versus righties, but he is better suited to hit lefties. 
a contract for Lord Escuriel will be very interesting. He's 30 years old. I'm not sure what he's going to be looking for on the open market. Can he play second base anymore? Probably not, but I don't know. Maybe Perry Hill could turn him back into a second baseman. But really, he's going to be in the outfield for you. That's where Lord Escuriel belongs, and he's okay out there. He's not going to kill you defensively. Put him in left. Put Kelnick over in right. I don't, maybe maybe a two or three year deal for Guriel, I think is what I would go with for 12 million a year, maybe like a three year, $36 million contract or something like that. Maybe with some incentives in there and a buyout at some point, maybe even a club option. Again, contracts are very, very hard to predict this offseason just because of how friggin' bad the free agent market is. But Lord Guriel is probably one of my top targets, only behind this guy. It's obvious, we all want Cody Bellinger on the Mariners. He's a guy that can play first base, but is better suited for the outfield. A sweet left-handed swing that would look really, really good in T-Mobile Park. He'd be a thumper in the middle of that lineup, and he came back and made a name for himself again with the Chicago Cubs. Bellinger hardly struck out. He was in the 87th percentile for K percentage, and he didn't swing and miss much. He hit the sweet spot a lot, 86th percentile. I am still worried about these numbers here. His barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, and average exit velocity weren't great which is actually pretty surprising to me i thought bellinger was a lot better player than that in terms of just those numbers specifically he's 28 years old so he's theoretically coming into his prime i think bellinger's a really good addition to this mariners outfield and he's very very good defensively his outs above average is in the 88th percentile arm strength 86th percentile and he's relatively fast in the 75th percentile you can see in 2023 bellinger hit 26 home runs with 97 rbi and just under 500 at bats he played in 130 games Bellinger hit 307, 356, 525 with an 881 OPS. He only struck out 87 times and he walked 40 times. This is the big difference in my opinion in Bellinger's game. He was out there making contact on pitches that he was swinging right through before. He struck out 150 times in 2022 in about the same amount of at-bats, almost double how much he struck out in 2023. Of course, we know that Bellinger, this cut, this like three-year stretch for him from 2020 and on to 2022, he was pretty bad for the Dodgers after he had been an MVP caliber player in 2019. Overall, I think that Bellinger, we don't really know what this guy is going forward, but I think that he's gonna start to even out. Maybe he's not gonna be a 307 hitter. He might be like a 270 hitter, but I think this 26 home runs will probably stick around. I think he's a good bet to hit 25 home runs and hopefully he sticks around under that 100 mark for strikeouts because that was the biggest surprise for me with Cody Bellinger. He also swiped 20 bags. As for a contract that I would give Bellinger, I think that's gonna be the most interesting one because he really made a name for himself this season. He was that good of a player. If I'm the Mariners, I'm willing to offer Bellinger like a four year, like maybe 80 million, maybe even a hundred million dollar contract. Honestly, I think that he might be worth that 20 million a year for Cody Bellinger. I think that might be worth it. We know how well a lefty swing plays in T-Mobile Park and overall Bellinger was really, really good this year. I think what his contract is going to be is going to be the second most interesting only behind Shohei Otani because he was really bad a couple years ago, really good this year. Do we believe in the bounce back from Cody Bellinger? And could you imagine Cody Bellinger in this lineup every day, possibly playing first base once in a while and playing in the outfield with gold glove defense? Cody Bellinger, I think, is my dream free agent target this offseason. I'm not going to hold my breath, but I would love to see him as a Mariner. Those are my top targets for the free agent hitters market this offseason. What are your top targets? Let me know in the comments down below. I appreciate you guys watching this one and go Mariners.